Hi there everybody, Peter of England. Um, this video today is by its nature quite intricate and so for all of those purists who are listening, um, please pay attention, maybe you'll need a calculator and uh, maybe make notes because what I'm going to cover today is um, based on the previous theme that I touched on in the previous video and that's concerning the, uh, the satanic Luciferian New World Order control agenda and those persons and parties operating behind the scenes. Um, and the reason I'm going into more depth today is that many, many uh, commentators, YouTube creators, uh, talking heads in the media uh, are expressing concerns about, well, why is this happening with Trump or what's happening with the Labour Party in the United Kingdom and the elections for Biden coming up in the United States against Trump. Um, but the, the deeper consequences of what's going on are not realized. And so what I want to try and do is bring some more information out, more power, more um, esoteric knowledge, um, particularly concerning these couple of organizations here. Um, I've actually put a little pre-diagrammatic help up um, for those uh, people who are going to pay a bit more attention, so you can rewind the video after, you can go over this again and look. But to save time, um, what I've done is I've just put some uh, stuff here that I'm going to explain. Now, uh, let's deal first with something that all of you might know of, and that's the logo for the UN, United Nations. Um, the reason I'm getting that out of the way and just showing people generally is because I try to make a, a, a bit of an attempt to draw it, but um, it would be a sort of a waste of time in showing it in any great detail. Um, the United Nations and NATO together are probably the biggest foes to humankind that are currently, along with probably the World Economic Forum and the WHO, controlling the agenda for the populations on the planet. So why this is important, it's following on from something that we've been touching on for quite some time here on Area 52.life, and that's the subject of divorcing yourself from these organizations. Divorcing yourself from these organizations, the body politic that controls them, along with then the banking, judicial, and financial corporatocracy that is controlling your daily life and slowly but surely dehumanizing you, taking you into this Orwellian, dystopian nightmare of a world that isn't actually coming, it's already here. It just seems as if it's not here. Um, so with that in mind, what I want to do is to encourage everybody to go here and make this declaration of divorce. For all of you who are concerned about the, the, the WHO and what it's got planned uh, for the coming, the coming months, um, to be regarded as not a person is the, the route that you really need to be taking because all the legislation, all of these mandates, lockdowns and laws or bylaws or statutory instruments are all prevailing on person and personage, not on the individual human being that has declared himself to be free of this, um, uh, should we say, a, a universal uh, debt shackle managed by the banking fraternities. So, that having been said, what I was doing the other day is I was just looking at the, 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 the documents on the, on the NATO website, um, and what I did is I decided to do some numerology. Numerology, some people call it um, gematria, some other people call it uh, isophacy. Um, isophacy is a slightly different interpretation on numerals and letters, mainly from a Greek, Greek perspective or Greek tradition. But basic numerology, uh, as you can see here, basically has nine um, lines or nine number counts. And then each letter within the alphabet, typically the Latin alphabet here, is attributable to one number. So if we go to NATO here, we can see that we've got 
a 5, a 1, uh, and a T. So we've got 5, 2, sorry, 5, 1, 5, 1, 2, 6. So you may also not be aware, but under the NATO uh, banner, you've also got NATO in reverse, which is O T A N. So I'd encourage you to go and have a look at that. So that basically reverses what we have here and takes us to six, two, one, five. These two, 11, three, three, 11. So what I noticed here the other day uh, was why would they actually put what, what international organization bothers these days because we're not using lingua franca as the international language of, of diplomacy anymore. Um, why would they need to put that underneath? It stands actually for Organisation du Traité Atlantique du Nord in French. Um, so... What I found is something very interesting. What I found is that if we take 5, 1, 2, 6, multiply it by 6, 2, 1, 5, yeah, we come up with the reciprocal of pi. That's 3.18. So the chances of these two numbers actually coming to the reciprocal of pi are quite staggering. Um, and so with that in mind, um, I decided to dig a little bit deeper into this and to find out what's, what's actually going on here, maybe combining these two. Um, and what we've got then is we've got NATO. and OTAN, and what we are also referring to here is that with this star symbol here of NATO, we have this gun sight around a four-pointed star. And why that's important is because of the esoteric nature and the knowledge that's behind these organizations and who they're working with predominantly with factions of the Anunnaki or the Nephilim or the Igigi, as sometimes it's referred to. And just to demonstrate that, um, I've got a depiction here from some Sumerian tablets which show representations of a vibrant planet, which the vibration of the planet is uh, that of Nibiru. And this, to all extent and purposes, is the main reason for global warming and the general cover-up by the controlling interests on the planet, and which has been there for the last, well, at least 20 years in preparation. They know what's coming, and so what they've done is they've used the control agenda of the CO2 problem um, and broadcast that far and wide, um, with the chemtrail additions into the atmosphere to help prevent, even if it's only to give an extra window of time of a few weeks eventually, for the non-disclosure uh, non of the inevitable, if this is coming to pass, that the point that has been uh, depicted in, in many, many traditions and many, many religions in the past that the day of a second sun will, will be upon the earth. So um, three days of darkness, three days of sun, um, the biblical flood referred to by uh, the, the Old Testament uh, and the Hebrews, um, everything points to the fact that certain events have happened in the past which you're not actually being told, told specifically about. So... What we find is that a lot of the Freemasonic organizations are um, esoterically connected with ancient Egyptian um, laws, ancient Egyptian uh, 
pantheons and ancient Egyptian regalia and ceremonies, particularly in the Freemasonic organizations, particularly in the, um, the organizations set up by Aleister Crowley uh, around 1900-1910, uh, Ordo Temporalis Orientalis, um, and uh, the Order of the Golden Dawn. So a lot of these esoteric organizations um, fed directly into the Freemasonic uh, orders as they were particularly prone to what's called satanic or Luciferian worship. Now why I mention that is what are the chances if we corral these off here that we get something called Aton, A-T-O-N. So for those who wish to go and look this up, look up the Atonist movement. It's where you get the word Atom from and also the word Aten. So the Atonists were a group of individuals um, or solar templar initiates from the time of Pharaoh Akhenaten where they got the name of unity or oneness and so what we have here is the encodement of the UN and you might say well that's a coincidence but as you can see it does actually spell what I state that it does spell and we've got this interesting concept out of the numerological uh, lettering here, which is pointing to something very specific, which I also want to go on to today. So the main thing to look at here is um, pi. What is pi? The pi on the calculator isn't quite correct. It's installed onto calculators on most machines um, as a deliberate blind, I maintain to stop people trying to work out how its derivation is. Um, like phi, um, they're called irrational numbers. They're called irrational numbers because they go on, on the decimal point forever and ever and nobody seems to be able so far to have got to the end of where um, pi would, would actually finish. Um, and so what we've got with pi um, is we've got that, if we want to look out what it is, we've got phi here, and phi, mathematically, is the square root of 5 over 2 plus a half. And so, if you, you take that, um, it gives you 1.618, I think it's, is it 03, let me t check my note, 03. Okay, so this is what we get. Now, if we cut that there and look now to something that's been controversial for a long time, and this is uh, all tied in with Einstein's theory of relativity and what's called the speed of light, whether it's a constant, whether it's an absolute, whether it's the same in all parts of the universe, when we get to this point here, um, this I claim and state is the speed of light, one, six, one point, sorry, 161,803.34, and that's nautical miles per second. And why that's important is because most people understand the depiction of it as 300,000 kilometers uh, per second. But if we multiply this uh, from nautical miles up to statute miles, then to kilometers, we can take a shortcut by multiplying it by 1.54, we get to 300,000 kilometers per second. Now those those functions are slightly different depending on whether you're on the equator or on the poles due to the gravitational effects on the photons. But what we've got there in effect is 
a depiction here all tied in with NATO's emblem and the people that are controlling NATO and therefore controlling your agenda, that there is an esoteric knowledge hidden in the background as a vibration on everything that you touch and think and look at. And that's why it's important so we can look now to say, well, in effect, um, what is, is pi, because it's no coincidence we've got this H constant in here. Phi, it comes from the, 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 the word in Greek. So we've got pi and phi together. So we get the speed of light in effect then becoming 1.2 time, or pi, sorry, pi becomes 1.2 times the speed of light squared and the speed of light squared being 2.6183 and we've got um, phi don't forget as 1.618 and the reciprocal 0 0.61803 so the beauty of it is it's what's called scale invariant and why that's important is that in any travel off planet or if you're going to make something smaller or larger it has to conform with the golden mean or the phi ratio otherwise as you make it larger or smaller or you travel faster or slower it actually distorts continuously and explodes and that's why fundamentally the human being has a, a, a DNA quotient that is perfectly aligned with, with pi through the DNA helix with the gaps between the pentose or the backbone um, and the hydrogen bonds. Everything is running on these angelic scales. So that's as far as I want to go today on that and not wanting to, to labor the point but the main quest here today has been just to try and show you that there is a lot going on there and the people who are working in the background um, know a lot of this uh, universal, highly uh, technical information and they've got it from individuals who've shown them for example, how photons travel. They don't travel in a straight line. They travel on a, on a spiral. The closest thing I could uh, use as an analogy there is um, one of these uh, curls of pasta. Um, not only is it, is it moving in that direction, but it's also going, uh, it's spiraling as well as it's turning at the same time. So it doesn't make a 360 degree turn from here to here, it actually makes 360 plus the distance it's traveled before it gets back to its, its point. Um, this is, is all relevant um, from a point of, of, of generally of cause and effect. And so what you have is with this photonic action here that this information having been imparted into the League of Nations to NATO and the UN um, if you look at the well probably the, the most hyped film over the last year uh, or in end of 23-24 has been the film Oppenheimer glorifying the building of the atomic weapons, the August the 6th, August the 9th, 1945 bombs that dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, one being plutonium, one being uranium, and the reason that the two were dropped is to verify that the firing mechanisms and what was actually being given to them was, was, was working. Um, the information was given to them by an extraterrestrial group that had been previously working with Adolf Hitler and the Nazis who changed their, their allegiance for various reasons which we won't go into now. But 
you have to stop and think, 1914-18 war uh, was basically fought on horseback with a few tanks and a few, um, few biplanes. The Second World War, only 20 years later, started in a similar manner. Wars usually begin with the same technology that they ended with on the previous um, uh, escapade. And so what you have to ask yourself is, with the Polish cavalry tra uh, charging at Adolf Hitler's military units in 1939-1940 on horseback, bearing sabers, um, how come within just five years we'd gone from that state of technology to having nuclear bombs. If our evolutionary progression is that fantastic, how come then it took millions of years for uh, man to evolve through Neanderthal, Cro-Magnum, Homo sapiens, um, and develop at those phenomenal, uh, well, phenomenally here compared with the, the past? It doesn't seem to add up and it doesn't seem to, 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 to gel. So, in conclusion, that's what um, I'm going to round up with now. Don't forget to go to area52.life because there is a lot of things coming at you thanks to these people here and here over the coming months. And what I suggest you, you begin to consider is moving to a safer mindset, a safer zone of influence, which is Area 52, which has been created specifically for you so that we can help now to show you how to protect yourself. And um, as the papers are talking about more and more, um, the Disclosure Project, NASA are talking again, as they do from time to time, about the so-called Ninth Planet that's coming into the solar system. It's not the ninth, it's actually the twelfth planet. Um, the three, well, the three missing being the Anunnaki consider the sun as a planet, the moon as a planet, and something called the, the asteroid belt, which is the planet Maldak, that was actually smashed uh, in former prehistorical um, conditions. So a lot of these things are going to become more and more apparent. The reason I'm doing this video in part today is for the purists out there. It's not probably for general consumption. It's not going to get me um, 100,000 uh, likes or extra subscriptions, but it's there to offer a hand for later when more and more of this information starts to come out because there will be a deliberate cloaking of it. There will be a deliberate hiding and denying of the information as more and more of it comes out um, because the main quest for these, these jokers here is to lock you down on the pretext of climate change, lock you down and probably in many instances the people who will be enforcing the lockdowns in Europe particularly will be um, the migrant factions, all men of fighting age that have been brought into Europe um, and these will be the foot soldiers, the mercenaries um, to, to basically do whatever they're told with the promises of uh, great reward or whatever it is that they, they pander to these days. So thank you for, for watching. I hope it's been uh, of interest um, and uh, please go to area52.life, take a look at the website. There's a lot of information there for you and uh, we've got lots more to come. And uh, please don't forget to make some comments on what I've put down here today, especially for these purists um, when we're looking at um, the, the maths in this here, square root of phi over two plus a half for phi. And especially now, as I claimed that in 2001, and I've kept this information there for for 21, 22 years and not published it, um, pi has in fact been resolved 
um, and that's what it is, 1.2 times the speed of light squared, just using harmonics to move the, um, the decimal point back and forward. And as you can quite categorically, undeniably see that here, the speed of light, when it's brought down to um, nautical miles, is spot on on this here. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, Peter of England saying goodbye.